Straight from the Horse's Mouth Radio Show, Episode 3. Welcome to Straight from the Horse's Mouth Radio Show. I'm Paula Slater, your host. This is an interview-based show where I interview unique and unusual and creative people in the horse world. I interview the creatives, artists who capture the beauty and elegance and the humor of a horse. There are entrepreneurs who invent and create products that make interactions with horses more comfortable, easy, and safe. There are therapists who invite horses to partner with them to help heal humans, physically, mentally, and spiritually. And then the therapists who help heal horses. The animal communicators who, who give us an insight into the mind of the horse. So I hope you will join me today in welcoming our guest. Okay, today I'd like to welcome um, Corinne Bauer from uh, British Columbia. Uh, Corinne is a social worker and she works with healing um, people that have trauma and um, other things through the use of horses. So, Corinne, could you expand on that just for us a little bit, please? Yes, certainly. Thank you uh, for having me today. And uh, I really look forward to chatting with you a little bit more about what I do here. And um, uh, basically, I'm um, what is called an equine facilitated um, counselor and life coach. And um, when I work with people, instead of sitting in an office, we work outside. And um, I have a, a cabin outside, and I also have a corral and horses. And so when people come and want to um, overcome challenges or difficulties in their life, um, we actually work with the horses in person. And uh, for people that are further away, not um, close by, I often do this work over the phone and I do phone coaching as well um, and it works really well uh, when people come they often don't know what to expect and I do give uh, uh, a starting session so people can really get a feel for um, what it would be like to work uh, with a counselor or life coach um, in an environment that's outdoors and with live animals such as horses. So that's that's basically what I do in a, in a one-on-one thing, and then I also do workshops, um, meditations with horses, and a host of other really neat things. <laughs> um, now, when you're saying that you work with horses, uh, what about the people that are uh, afraid of horses? I mean, now I suppose they wouldn't choose your facility if they were terrified, but let's say that there was someone that um, always wanted to, always enjoyed horses, but were afraid and thought maybe this was the path to their healing. Yeah, um, it is a really great question. I do get people who are a bit uh, leery of horses and um, as long as they're willing to try and come, I have a setup so that the horses are actually in a corral and then we can meet the horses very um, slowly and introduce them that way over the fence. So there's an actual physical barrier if that's what a person would feel more safe with. Uh, often people get over that fear very quickly once they meet the horses and through my guidance and reassurance, they see that the horses are really gentle giants and they are very used to working with people and they know what to do when people come 
And fears is one of the things that I work with quite often. And whether it's a fear of horses or fear of other things in your life, the horses are just uh, really great in helping people get over that just, you know, by seeing um, how to work with them and um, what you can do with horses. Okay, so what would be, let's say that someone came out and uh, they were past that and they were in with the horses. What would we see or what would we observe if we were standing on the sidelines? Oh, um, it really, really varies. It, it, um, because I work with a wide variety of people, um, it, it can vary quite a bit from session to session. So I may be working with um, adults or with children. And uh, let's say an adult comes to me and they want to do a session and we go in with a horse and we may be starting out with something as um, non-threatening as just greeting a horse. And that would be just to walk up to the horse, extend your hand, let the horse smell you, and then standing back and watching the horse's energy and observation of the horse and what's going on within the person as we do that. I often start out with a grounding um, meditation where I help a person get in tune with their own body so that when anything comes up, they can recognize feelings much easier and put words to them. Um, and then we, you might actually see me working with people where they're actually leading a horse around or they're lunging a horse, which is putting a horse on a long lead line and letting a horse go around you in a circle and things like that. So there's, it's just a whole um, different ways of working. Again, it depends on the person's needs and what they're showing up with. Mm -hmm. Now, um, tell me, the work on the lunge line, what is, what's the purpose of that? What is the person going to get from that? Um, it, it depends. Um, for, for an example would be, um, I have had a person who has sort of a, a hard time letting go of, of things in their lives and they're maybe stuck in a, a emotional, um, block where they're not able to get over um, certain things that they've uh, experienced in their lives. So being able to work with a horse um, in a capacity where they can communicate with the horse um, and the horse walking around them in a circle actually has opened things up for uh, people where they can now see what would it be like if maybe your problem, your issue, your the thing that's keeping you stuck is um, a little bit further away from you instead of up close to you and how you can control that and, and often just using your thoughts or sending the horse a picture in your mind to allowing it to walk or, or stop or trot, or things like that. It's quite a powerful exercise and it's a little bit difficult to explain um, in words um, but this is just something you might see, and and yeah, it may raise some questions. Is what is that about? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now, getting going back and going into the person's, um, let's say the person that's that's being treated, what would they, you know, be? They would be instructed to try and communicate through visualization, and um, and watch the horse. I assume the response of the horse. Is that what you would be instructing them to do on the lunch yes. line? Yeah. Yes. Um, sometimes we um, do a lot of observation, and sometimes a person is more engaged in the actual activity, and I do the observation, and then when we're done, I may be asking some questions to the client to see what they felt while they were doing it during the exercise, and then recalling what they saw the horse do in response to it. And sometimes I guide them right through that while they're doing it. Just, again, depends. Um, I don't want to interrupt a person's flow if they're in a, in a certain place and things are going well. And sometimes they need um, a little bit of intervention where I step in and 
they what did you just see happen and how did that feel and what what do you think the horse felt what was it like for the horse and that really opens up um a lot of discussion sometimes and insight mm -hmm. well that's uh, that sounds really interesting um and now have you you work with people that have post-traumatic stress and um, have been abused and have substance abuse and so on. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, you are a um, certified social worker. Can you tell us a little bit about your training and background? Yes, absolutely. Um, I am a registered social worker with a bachelor's degree in social work. And I also um, am a graduate of a master coach uh, training program and um, I have taken a whole slew of different programs to do with equine facilitated therapy and counseling as well as I have training in Contra which is um, for working with people with disabilities and as well as children and it's therapeutic writing however I don't do therapeutic writing at my facility here. Um, what I do is mainly um, working with the horse on the ground. So we don't ever sit on the horse. Okay. We don't saddle the horse, mm -hmm. but we work with the horse in hand on the ground. Mm -hmm. Now, okay. Um, I just wanted to go back to the, um, the coaching program. Can you just explain that one a little bit? You said you're... Oh, yeah. Uh, the uh, life coaching program. Oh, okay. Yes, I wasn't sure. And the other, yes. yeah, and you also have, um, you have levels one and two in, in riding instruction. Is that correct? Canadian riding instruction? Or yes, level I one do. And two? So the, um, now let's look at a situation where somebody who comes to you is having difficulty, maybe um, a fear of riding. And let's say that they've been away from riding for, for some time or they've had a, an injury or some kind of trauma and are afraid to get back on a horse but really want to get back on a horse, um, would you work with them trying to help them overcome that fear and get back on? Yes, absolutely. Actually, it's one of my passions as well is helping riders, helping horse people working with their own horses or even just riding again if they want to ride at a riding facility and if they're having challenges with that and especially because I I'm in my 40s and I know what it's like to have been away from riding for a couple of years and even though I've had horses myself all my life except for a couple of years um, it was difficult to get back on so I, I so very much relate to that feeling of what it's like. And I would absolutely love to work with people who have um, a challenge in that. And, and I have helped a few people getting back on and feeling more confident and listening to their own inner signals when um, they're going up to ride and perhaps something's holding them back and they're not really sure what to do about that. Um, well, let's say that, that I think that um, say a lot of people in the, uh, say, baby boomer group or the older group are afraid, of course, of falling and hurting themselves because they don't bounce back the way they used to when they were younger. And um, one of, I mean, of course, one of the things I've been told is to, uh, you know, improve your balance and your seat and get fit. And, you know, that'll solve some of the problem. But the other par part is the mind over matter. And let's say that they're absolutely terrified and they want to get on, though. And um, it's what, what would you are there some tips that you could give people who are sort of in that position? Yes, absolutely. Well, the first thing I want to say is. If a person is terrified, I would be really worried if the person ignored those signals and just got on a horse. To me, that would be like just 
ignoring all your signs and then getting on the horse and then if something happens it just re um, confirms your fears and then you know you were afraid to begin with and now you're you're telling your body hey you know you need to be afraid because see what happens every time I get on something bad happens and I get hurt so absolutely the first thing is yeah if you have these um, signals um, pay attention to them and the next thing I would say is you know fear can be there as your protection and fear can be also there as something that holds you back. So I would have a, a few questions to ask a person who's going through something like that. One thing to ask is just situational. You know, is was it something in the horse you just saw or, or observed today that made you feel afraid? Was it like something that triggered you that the horse did from maybe something that happened to you before? So that may be something to really explore because horses will do things that will trigger you sometimes. And sometimes you really need to pay attention because if, you know, maybe you had an accident before and maybe something, you know, came up for you before, but you ignored it, then that may be a bit of a pattern. So we want to look at that. We also uh, want to find out if it's something in the environment. Um, let's say you go to the place and where your horse is and somehow the energy doesn't feel right. If something feels off, it, maybe there's something going on. Your horse is picking up on it, showing you signs. Perhaps you're picking up in yourself some warning signs. And that's something to be aware of as well. Then there's a few other questions I would want to ask. And that would be more on the inside of what's going on inside of you. So one thing to ask would be, is this this, this thought that's coming up that's um, allowing you to, to feel afraid, is this something your head is telling you? Or is it something your gut is telling you? So is it an instinct that's coming up? Or is it a memory? So that would help really find out for the person what's really going on. And um, sometimes um, that really can help even to be aware of where that fear is coming from. Is it a real fear? Is it an irrational fear? Um, is it a rational fear? <laughs> things like that. So there's, there's a few things that would take the person through and these are maybe just some even some questions the person can ask themselves listening to this right here before they go over to the to see the horse and that may help them as well mm -hmm. um and w then what about um then what about the people who are it's just i guess a memory or a, you know re remembering back to the past where things maybe it is ir irrational and um would you use visualization or you know to help them calm down or what would yes, you do in that situation. Yes, there are a number of things that I use. Uh, a visualization is great. I do a, a guided body scan, which is where we stand or sit, and I got a person through uh, checking in with their body and really finding out um, if they're tense in a certain place in the body. Let's say their um, irrational fear has manifested in a stomach cramp and they're just you know feeling really pain in their stomach or tightness or anything like that we want to resolve this before they get on the horse so with the body scan I do some breathing exercises helping the person to really focus on the areas where they're holding that tension could be in the shoulders often it's in between the shoulder blades or the shoulders and Anytime we have a physical um, manifestation of your mental thoughts, that all translates to when you go to see your horse, when you get on your horse, even when you're maybe brushing your horse, your horse may be picking up on that. Mm -hmm. And that is great to be aware of what, what it is before you go to your horse. And even if you forgot to do that, but you go to the barn, just take a few quiet moments and doing that can really help. 
Um, yeah, uh, those are really good uh, suggestions and ideas. Um, the other thing, too, is, all right, let's say that the person is now on the horse, and things have been going along. It's their horse, and they know the horse, and they're going along, and then all of a sudden they start thinking about, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm talking about a person who might ha be creating their own sort of negative energy or, or whatever. Um, some of the suggestions I've heard are, you know, to think about other things, you know, to, to focus on um, something else, you know, focus on the, uh, let's say that they're um, out for a hack, to focus on the environment, look, you know, and get their thoughts away. Because, of course, you know, those people who are, who interact with horses know that horses pick up on your body language. Some people feel that they can see your thoughts. I don't know. Where, where do you stand on that? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Horses pick up on a lot of things um, that are going on with, on with, with us inside. Um, the, what you mentioned about focusing on the environment that can work, um, especially if you're in, in an environment that's, um, relaxing for you, let's say you're on a trail ride and you want to focus on how beautiful the flowers are this year, how, how green the trees are. And if that helps you, that's great. Um, the other thing that really works, and this is for people who have anxiety or post-traumatic stress, because it's often the body that holds um, various memories. And you can rewire yourself that if you're feeling or thinking about suddenly something that's taking you in a tailspin of, of anxiety, is to touch yourself or touch your uh, something physical with your hand. So let's say you're riding along, something comes up in your mind, you start going too much in your head, then take your hand and just really feel the feeling of the reins or rub your hand on your thigh or just do something physical that actually brings you back to your body. And that can help you get focused back in the physical and help your body to stay present with the physical instead of focusing too much on what's going on in mind. Mm -hmm. um, now, uh, let's see. If um, again, if that doesn't work, what do you suggest? Um, well, taking a break can be very helpful. Instead of just going on, maybe just taking one a uh, few minutes to stop and breathe, and just really breathe fully and be in the moment. And then carry on. Um, this actually even helps horses who have anxiety. Um, a lot of people don't recognize the signs either in themselves or their horse. And um, being able to stop for just a few minutes and then um, just interrupting the pattern that's creating in your mind. And then moving forward again or um, moving in a circle or just doing something a little bit different that can actually help. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, uh, there's so many different things that can really help, and you have to experiment what's the thing that works for you. Right. And depending on your triggers and depending on, you know, what you've tried, um, not everything works for every person. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I, I'm thinking, too, on the horse, or the horse and rider where the horse is picking up on that anxiety and, um, you know, some of the things that, you know, I've read about, suggestions of of just changing the the pace or not changing the pace but so much changing the direction as you said going in a circle or you know trying a little exercise a zigzag back and forth trying to bring yourself and the horse back down yes yes the other thing you can try if you feel is singing <laughs> and um it actually sometimes helps to verbalize so if you're having a challenge and you're kind of getting all tense to just start talking, talk to your horse or sing or just verbalizing. Or if you have a writing partner along with you, start talking, have, strike up a conversation about something. And that can also change the energy and what, what's going on with you or your horse. 
Oh, that's those are all really good suggestions, Karen. That's uh, wonderful. Um, now, what about uh, let's go to the person. Let's go back into the ring and, and talk about um, maybe the person who is having some issues and the horse reflecting back to them. You were speaking a little bit about that, that the horse might reflect back some of their feelings. We know, of uh -huh. course, yeah, we know, of course, about the, the rider and the horse will reflect back to what you're, you're feeling. We all had that experience, but um, let's say now they're, they're back, let's say the person on the ground and uh, um I think uh, you were speaking one time about um, um, the horse not even wanting to come in contact uh, with the person. Mm. Yeah, um, horses are prey animals, and they are wired in a way so they are extremely emotionally intelligent. We call this also emotional agility, and um, what that is is basically horses are extremely keen on reading energy out there because it de they depend on it for their survival. So if a predator comes along and the predator is hungry and his intention is to get the horse for lunch, mm -hmm. <laughs> the horse will pick up on that intention and that energy coming from the predator. However, if the predator is full and he just had lunch and he's not interested and he's just laying there in the shade, the horse will most likely happily graze along, keep an eye on him, but also know the intention is the predator is not there to get them. So when a person comes and us being humans, we often wear masks to protect ourselves emotionally. And um, horses are really great at reading when a person is showing up with something that they're covering up. Um, you can't really lie to a horse. They just pick up something is not congruent with how you're presenting and what is really going on inside of you. They may not know exactly what it is, but they can tell something's not congruent in your presentation and what's going on. And so that may lead the horse um, to either stay away or act out, or shut down, or a number of different things can happen when a person shows up like that. And so that's where we read the horse and find out, you know, what's really going on with the person off, and that leads the person to really start talking about what's going on. Um, often they feel quite safe with the horse, and they may have not felt self safe with people to share and um, you know again you can't really lie to a horse so that often helps people to you know start being quite honest and sharing and um, when the person starts sharing and they're, they're starting to reveal what's going on often when we observe the horse the horse's energy and or behavior starts changing as well Yes, that would be really interesting to see, and um, and I bet that uh, you've seen some very nice interactions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, I had uh, one person come who um, showed up and said everything's fine and she's doing great and she doesn't really know why she's here, and uh, we were standing in a safe place and. Uh, the horses were in the uh, corral, and just almost instantly, the horses started running around in the corral, and um, they were just bucking and going on, and, and and she kept saying, she's fine, and everything's great, and I stopped her, and I said, I want you to look at the horses right now, and tell me what do you feel is going on with them what are they feeling and, and you know what do you see and she suddenly changed her face changed and she looked at me hmm they seem to be angry or something and I said yeah okay and then she she looked at me she says, to be honest I'm really angry right now 
and then she shared a story about what was going on with her parents and her family and something that was happening that really um, was not a good thing. And she, she revealed her true feelings. And just as she started sharing that and getting to the heart of the matter, the horse's energies changed almost immediately. And they calmed down and they went from running, galloping and bucking to walking. And then all of a sudden they stopped. And then they stood and they looked at her and they started yawning and licking and chewing and their eyes got soft and then they shook their bodies and they started rolling on in the sand. And she asked me, what is going on with the horses? And I asked her how she felt. And she said she felt better now that she was able to share what's going on in her life. And uh, she thought that maybe horses felt better too. And I said, yeah, I think they are. They are releasing some of that tension maybe that they were feeling. And that may have had something to do with what was going on for her. So I said, that's just one of the examples of some of the things that can happen and how it opens things up for people. Mm -hmm. I think that would be really quite interesting to see and observe. And especially if it occurs again and again, it definitely uh, reinforces that that uh, horses do pick up on a lot. Now, um, I have a question for you about what about physical problems? Have you ever had a situation where someone came for um, therapy, but uh, let's say that the horses picked up on something that was going on in their, their body? Like, let's say, heart or um, something that maybe that they directed you to that or they event you eventually found out that maybe they had some kind of physical issue? Is that yes. Uh, yes, wow. absolutely. Mm. Um, I had one lady come whom I did not know very much about. She just came one time and... Um, we just sat in chairs and we, we were chatting and the horses came over and um, one of the horses just went with his uh, um, nose to her neck and just started sniffing her neck and um, it, it went around her back and then back to the front of her throat and just blowing and sniffing and smelling and blowing and going back around to the other side. And finally, she didn't say anything, and I, I said, finally, I have to ask you, I, I'm observing this horse, and he seems very intent on your on your throat area and your neck area. Is, is, do you think there's any reason for that? And she said, oh, well, I'm not sure, but I um, had thyroid cancer, and I had a surgery a couple months ago. So I was just blown away by that. It seemed like the horse was honed in on her on that physical area with her and seemed to want to point something out to her or just he was doing something. I'm not exactly sure, but it had something to do with her throat. And um, after she shared that, then she, she talked a little bit more about that. And um, what it was revealing was that she was not a person who spoke up very much uh, in her life and that she'd had throat problems for a while and that she's here she wants to learn to be more um, vocal she wants to be able to speak out more and um, so that was something the horse revealed just by the physical part of her body that's amazing that's amazing Oh, my goodness. Well, this really makes me interested in learning more about this. And I and you mentioned that you write you are writing a book. Yes, I'm in the process um, as uh, it's a process for sure. Writing it always is. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I'm, I've been working on a book that um, talks about the story about my own horse journey. And the insights I've gotten in my own life from my own horses that I've had um, during the years um, from childhood until now. And I'm hoping that book will shed some 
insights for other people as well. Mm -hmm. It sounds great. And I really look forward to that. I'd love to read that. Um, can you tell us now um, a little bit about, uh, about what you offer in British Columbia? And again, where people can find you on the web, your website, and um, how they can get in contact with you if they um, would like maybe to come and visit you or um, if they would like to get some uh, therapy through the internet you said that you work through skype and yes um anything else that you feel that's pertinent yes absolutely um uh, the best way to get a hold of me or find more information about myself and what i do is um through the website which is horsejourney.com and uh on there, you will find all about my programs, whether it's individual one-on-one uh, -on -one life coaching um, and or counseling, uh, as well as the numerous workshops that I'm offering currently and next year and, and so on. I also have a quite extensive resource library with articles, uh, newsletter, uh, assessment quiz and um, the list goes on. It's, there's a lot of resources there uh, to explore. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm doing a lot, lots of different things and I'm hoping to be able to be more accessible even for people that are not in my area. And I also do travel. So if um, a group wants to have me come to their barn and put on a clinic or a workshop, or even um, to their corporation or business, I'm here to speak about the wisdom of horses and how to uh, have your life journey be enhanced through the wisdom of horses. And um, that's basically what I do. <laughs> that sounds great. Can you um, give your phone number? Yes, my phone number is 250-860-1964. And your website again? It's horsejourney.com. Okay. And is there any other contact information that, that would be useful to our listeners? Uh, yes, you can also email me. And my email is karin, K-A-R-I-N, at horsejourney.com. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Corinne, for speaking with us today on Straight from the Horse's Mouth radio show and it's been really informative and I would there's so much I would like to discuss with you and I'd love to have you back again at another date and um, is there anything else that you would like to share oh well first of all thank you again for having me on this radio show it's been a pleasure and I would love to share more about various um, things that come up if people contact you and they have various uh, questions I'm always available and would love to do um, more radio shows on maybe what interests people out there and um, maybe where they're stuck and could use some help oh, that sounds great so in the show notes on the website straight from the horse's mouth radio show com there'll be more information about Corinne and her website and any links that uh, that you might need to contact her okay thank you very much Thank you. Okay. Okay, so that's it for this week. And um, please join us next week for another interesting guest from the horse world. If you enjoyed the show, please leave us a positive review on iTunes. It's Paula Slater signing off for Straight from the Horse's Mouth radio show. See you next week.